Good evening. How's it going out there, everyone? Welcome back here to a Sunday night, end of the weekend. Monday, right around the corner. May 4th, 2025 is the date. Uh, 9.24 a.m. here, local, or p.m., local time. I'm ready for bed. California time. All right, so what do we got here for earthquake activity? It looks like a little 0.6, not a 6 magnitude, but a little 0.6. Uh, one of the latest quakes here on the globe. Let's go ahead and check out uh, real quick, see what's going on here across California. Uh, definitely a handful of earthquakes earlier today throughout the area of Southern California. As uh, far as anything above 2.5, Looks like a couple earthquakes down there in the Baja, California region. Three-pointer and a 2.6. Uh, aside from that, a couple of smaller earthquakes here in the last hour up and down the uh, area. Nothing big. I am noticing a little swarming going on here near the Yorba Linda region. That is, uh, well, around the greater Los Angeles area in general. Not 100% certain which fault system that earthquake activity is striking on, but... Uh, Got a, a little swarm, some ones, and even a two-pointer in there. Continue to keep an eye, of course, on the Southern California region up here in the Garlock Fault Shear Zone. Got about 12 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. A bunch of ones. Nothing big, but it's been a spot here of elevated earthquake activity for, you know, for at least, I think, the last several weeks here. Just got another earthquake notification on my phone. Ooh, 6.0 earthquake coming in. <clears throat> So let's go see that. It looks like it's in the Southeast Pacific rise. Uh, way down here. 6.0. Uh, just off the, uh, well off the Chile coast. 6.2 miles deep. Uh, with a lot of stuff that's been going on here recently. Including that larger earthquake activity south of Argentina. Well off the tip of South America. Uh, gotta watch the Prichili Trench. We got a lot going on here around this area including that six pointer just right now um looks like that chile station right there in south america is picking up that earthquake quite nicely most of the time these fracture boundaries out here let me show you guys if i can bring this up gonna be right here uh normally put the strain out here along the pre chile trench notice these arrows uh the earthquake activity happening right here on this fracture boundary uh, between the Antarctica and the Nazca plate. Uh, double check that. Yep. Over here to the west. But things should amplify even further. Adding uh, extra strain strain there across the Peru Chile Trench. Santiago Chile area. Been seeing a little bit of swarming activity as well. Things have been on the increase here. Following well, this movement down south here. You remember the seven pointer. And uh, just a lot of activity uh, around the Peru Chile Trench. So we got to watch that. Uh, is a major subduction zone that extends well all the way up here um there's different names for it but it's pretty much the same subduction zone uh right up here off the um area where this earthquake struck near columbia 4.5 from uh, earlier this morning all the way down here uh subduction zone pretty much ends i'd say right about here but uh, yeah got some uh Decent activity happening all around it. We should see things amplify here across that region soon. Even further than what we're seeing right now, I should say. So six-pointer. Um, let me refresh this, see if they uh, sticking with that magnitude. It has been reviewed. Uh, so it has, you know, seismologist has checked it out and kept the uh, 6.0 magnitude level. All right, interesting uh, activity. Uh, back to the West Coast here real quick. Um, yeah, nothing major going on. Definitely got some uptick, though, in terms of microquake activity. Uh, just off the San Andreas Fault, the creeping segment. Got uh, a couple earthquakes here today near Pinnacles. Two-pointer and a 1.5. San Francisco area still has yet to move. I don't know what's going on here, but it's been super-duper quiet, and that is... Uh, a little odd. Let me turn this thing to mute. Just getting all the notifications there from the USGS and whatnot as uh, far as that earthquake. Uh, one earthquake up there around the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. It looks like it's almost right at that level uh, for a 2.6 this morning. So let's go check out the trimmer map this evening. 
Well, this is going to be throughout the day today. Uh, 54 epicenters. 54 epicenters of tremor. And, uh, of course, we got that earthquake here this morning. Um, so we'll continue to watch this region here, the Cascadia. We could obviously see some a partial rupture. It doesn't have to be a complete full rupture of the Cascadia. Uh, in fact, these partial ruptures occur... Um, quite often in between major intervals of, you know, as far as the largest um, earthquake possible on a full rupture. So this uh, partial rupture could produce up to an 8.4. And that is the area I'm kind of watching just due to the amount of earthquake activity around this region recently. A lot of movement across the Gorda Ridges here, uh, the Blanco Fracture Zone over the last couple of years. Trimmer activity has been amplified here across the southern end, resulting in earthquake activity upstream. Uh, so it's fairly well locked uh, there across the southern segment. Um, I think we got a higher possibility of seeing that uh, earthquake down here instead of a full rupture. But you never know. Still uh, keep an eye on that. Nevada region, mostly smaller microquakes. Nothing going on there through Yellowstone, but let's just double check. Uh, the Yellowstone overview real quick. Yeah, I'm not really not seeing a whole lot of earthquake activity. Some noise out there earlier today in the evening. I don't know if there was thunderstorms or wind, but uh, that is definitely not magma movement. And there's not a whole lot of earthquake activity happening there for now. Uh, the oil field to Texas, still seeing some movement here. This is not aftershock activity, and these are not foreshocks from that uh, you know, five-pointer there from uh, yesterday. It's just... It's a swarm of quakes that's been going on since the mid 80s or whenever the oil boom started out here. It just it's happened. That's what goes on in the oil fields. A lot of earthquake activity. And uh, that's those earthquakes can get somewhat large up in the five magnitude, upper fives. Uh, hopefully that's the last five pointer for a little while, but still seeing some movement out there outside of Pecos. Uh, New Madrid seismic zone, pretty quiet aside from one earthquake in the Arkansas area early this morning down here across the Puerto Rico Trench. Still got uh, some activity stirring up following that five-pointer, 5.6 from late last night. A number of earthquakes up here north of San Juan. Um, been quite active uh, across the Puerto Rico region recently. And the general strain out here uh, recently does appear to be working its way northward. Now what can happen here is that we could see elevated activity along the Prujelli Trench. Uh, but also at the same time, the South American plate here uh, gets pushed further to the north. If you look at this GPS motion um, map, it shows the strain moving northward here with the South American plate pretty much crunching the Caribbean plate there. So that could be why we're seeing a little bit of elevated activity uh, in this region following the activity down south. But I still think we got to watch the Prujili Trench here. It's got uh, a lot of potential as far as producing large earthquakes. Up into the Alaska region, nothing major going on. A couple ones and twos and some smaller, well, these are fours. It looks like one from last night, one from this morning. Nothing new to report as far as larger activity goes. Um, and into the Japan region, a couple fours. Let's see what we got there across the area. Really nothing... Uh, Nothing too active across the region for now. Pretty good cluster of movement, looks like, south of the Philippines with a bunch of fours and threes in there. Australia, three-pointer. New Zealand down here looks like some threes stirring up. Some deeper activity once again. Uh, looks like that's just a southern end of the North Island region. Looks like a fairly deep earthquake there earlier today and of course that's going to be associated with the uh, Hikurangi subduction zone yeah pretty good cluster going on here across the uh, Prucelli Trench but uh, I think we'll see something larger out here soon in that region also got a four pointer right now coming into the uh, let's see where that's at bring up the EMSC model real quick here and see exactly where that four pointer is at. Looks like that's stirred up following the six pointer. 
So over here off the coast there of Nicaragua, 4.0. That was at 0424. That follows, oh man, this 0424. Yeah, so that follows that six pointer. So watch this region. It does look like it's quite strained out here. A lot going on north and south around the region here. Uh, let's see what else we got out here. Santorini, Greece area. A couple earthquakes this morning. Uh, I do want to double check though. Here's a here's a, one of the recorded seismograph stations out there around Santorini. Uh, just a couple smaller quakes out there. I don't see any further fours out there in the last few hours. So things are just kind of Occasional moderate quakes followed up by some smaller quake activity there around the Santorini, Greece region. Super massive sunspot. In fact, this one right here is uh, roughly about half the size of the sunspot that created that Carrington event uh, way back when. Right? You guys, I'm sure, remember the Carrington event or at least studying it in school. Uh, it's a massive sunspot area, but. I don't know if it's got any complexity within it. Um, I'm really not seeing anything that would tell me that this thing is getting ready to produce any type of flaring, strong flaring. Uh, the complexity, magnetic complexity here looks fairly stable, but it could change. If it's going to change, it should probably do it now while it's center disk directly looking at the planet here. Another sunspot back here further towards the eastern uh, quadrant of the sun. But still, there's a, a couple, there's a clear cut separation of the core there. Not going to really produce anything with that uh, type of setup. Uh, so we'll watch 4079, see what it wants to do. I mean, it's a massive area. 90% uh, chance for a C flare, M flare at 35, X flare about 5% chance or so. Uh, the moon up there around 60% illumination there. Beautiful uh, moon. Perfect time to. Uh, break out the zoom camera and get some of those crater shots out there. It's been a while since I've done any moon shots. So I'm, I got to go out there uh, soon. Uh, let's see here. Nothing major for the auroras for now. Uh, looks like there was a little bit of elevated conditions here earlier today, but uh, really nothing of any major uh, activity for the auroras right now. Severe weather returns to the western Texas area over the next couple days. Um, let's see what we got here for. Oops, meant to go to the numerical models. Um, I guess we can check out precipitation here. It's not fully loaded. This only goes out 198 hours. But we'll run this model and see what we got for precipitation. It looks like California may be on tap to get some more rainfall. Uh, Northern California is kind of rare for us to get rain this late in the season. Uh, we don't normally pick up any rain in May. But uh, looks like we may get a little bit more. Texas and Oklahoma in store for some more rain as well. Uh, Florida down there getting quite a bit of rain. So it's a very active spring so far. Looking at the long-range extended models for severe weather, it looks uh, quite active out here over the next few weeks. Week 3 looks quite impressive. May 18th to the 25th of May, showing uh, what could be some further severe weather out there, stretching all the way up in the central, even towards the northern plains there. Of course, May is peak tornado season. It's got to be uh, on guard for that. Alrighty, folks, um, I'm out of here. Going to call it. I don't know what happened to my Petrolia station. That is offline, but uh, hopefully it comes back. If it doesn't, by morning, I'll swap that one out with a, a different station. But uh, for now, have a good night. We'll see you guys back out here for the Monday morning update. Stay safe, everyone.